Hello and welcome to, I think it's season three of the Sligo Show. We've had a kind of few, <laughs> our, our camera and Brian argues with me on that one, but sure, we'll take it that it's series three. We're great to, great to be here and glad to be here. Uh, a little later on, we have a special guest, Clodagh Flynn from Maeve's Dragon Warriors. And she'll be telling us about, I think you call it a Viking boat that you can go rowing on in Sligo, but it has a real special purpose and it's an amazing project. We have all your news, sport and entertainment as always. But first, we have a guest who you've probably seen most weeks on our show. Jessica Farry is here, local journalist, because I mean, I can't say that you work for just one. We mostly know you from the Sligo champion, but you are spread across so many different mediums out there. It's nice to have you live in the studio on it's nice, camera. It's nice to be here, Brendan. It's weird being asked the questions question rather than once. asking the questions. Because yeah. I said that to you, you've never really been asked <laughs> by anyone in an interview. I suppose no one really interviews the reporters too often to find out their story. No, like. most people would say we're not interested enough. That's why, oh, well, that's why we're the ones doing the interview. And well, look, we'll, we'll find out in the next 15 or 20 minutes. So look at, I suppose anyone that doesn't, does not know you, uh, like, can you tell us a bit more about what you do and what's your career? Yeah, so I'd say I'm a, I'm a, I'm a journalist, but I'm a, across a number of, of areas. Mm. I would be sports and news. Um, I'm from Sligo. I work in the Sligo Champion. Um, and I do a little bit for maybe Ocean FM. Mm. I've done a commentary recently, sports commentary, Premier League, um, for News Talk. I have my finger in a couple of pies, I suppose you could say. Um, it's no harm to kind of diversify a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm very much a freelance. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, um, I would have done bits and pieces for air sport back in the day as well. And God, before that, I was, um, I used to be in Satanta Sports okay. uh, for little bits and pieces yeah, on, yeah. on the Premier League day when I'd be, I'd be kind of on the other side of it then. I was doing some of the production bits and pieces in the background um, ah, for okay. graphics and things like that. So yeah. Um, that's that's me really. In so co college-wise, was it just journalism, or when you say you did some of the production side of things, you, was that part of your journalism? Yeah. So journalism in DCU actually, they kind of got gotcha. you. Some of the modules were about kind of um, the production side of things. Okay. Um, I did one module, and I always say this at the time, I hated this one particular class, and it was called news design. Okay. And it was about literally designing a newspaper or a magazine. And someone had told me beforehand, if you do one class, do this one because it will stick with you. Just handy to have, right? Yeah, so like some of it was Photoshop, terrible at Photoshop, really, really <laughs> bad at Photoshop. My hand is not steady enough. Um, but then when it got down to the, the kind of actually designing the paper and all that kind of thing, I, I kind of, I don't know, I, I picked it up. And it's actually the one module that I've used ever since okay, I left so, college. So In my day-to-day -day job, I use it every single that's day. What I'm so you do lay out some do of the Do all the layout and oh, design okay. um, in the champion ourselves. Like, so that's actually really stuck with me since, which oh, is I hilarious. But we did a couple of other classes. Um, which involved things like sound editing and um, video editing and video yeah. recording and all that kind of stuff. So they basically had you prepared for everything. Well, I imagine <laughs> in, in, in the various roles you do, you go, well, I need to, be able to edit this myself, send it off, get it clipped, get it right. So yeah, and you prepared for all. I think like the course there, the idea is that it's geared towards your career afterwards. So mm. a lot of what we did were classes in radio reporting, radio news, radio packages, kind of um, TV reporting all that sort of TV news as well, all that kind of thing. And then you have to do a placement afterwards. But one of the best things about it was there's a, a radio station, DCU FM. Yes. Okay. They've won a lot of awards. And then there's the college newspaper there too. And that's yes. kind of where you pick up most of the stuff because yeah. even working in the in the radio station there, like I'd never done anything obviously when I was going to college and um, getting to do that. And it meant that you were ringing people asking for interviews and you know yourself when, you, when you're first <laughs> ringing someone for an interview, you are so nervous ringing someone because if they say no, they don't know who you are. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, no, you're ringing you someone saying, oh, hi, it's Jessica here from DCU FM. They're like, what is DCU FM? Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. People, people were really good and it kind of, you kind of learned a lot, a lot of the kind of the smaller stuff there from doing that. And yeah, absolutely. You, you learned how to take the rejection as well. And well, people well, are like, yeah. no, thanks. Or how did you get my number? You know, that kind of thing. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah um, probably GDPR things nowadays. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't wash nowadays. Yeah, but um, yeah. yeah, that was a really, really good starting point, I have to say. And I learned an awful lot from those early days, even in the college newspaper too, you know? Well, I mean, that, it, that was brilliant that they were there on campus to do them. So I was going to say, like, when did your career into, I was going to say sports journalism, journalism but in general journalism, was, was their placement was your first time doing it in the real world as such? Yeah, it, it was. And even actually just, just before that kind of, um, <clears throat> and I always say like, I've been really lucky in that, like one day I was in college and I think I was wearing my Slagger Rovers jersey. And a guy in my class just came up to me and he was like, listen, I do bits and pieces f uh, about the League of Ireland for this website called extratime.ie. Oh, yeah. It's not paid, but we actually need someone in Sligo to do matches and all the kind of thing. Would you be interested? And I was kind of like, I would never get this opportunity to do it anywhere. And at that stage, I didn't need to be paid. You know, I was in college yeah, and I was yeah. learning. wasn't good enough to be paid anyway, <laughs> you know. Um, so I was like, OK, yeah, I'll do this. And that was kind of, again, where I picked up an awful lot, learned more about interviewing and kind of writing match reports and all that kind of yeah. basic stuff through that. 
And then after that, it was kind of, I think the champion contacted me then when I was in the second year and asked what I do a uh, uh, Rover's column every single every week, week in the paper. Okay. Um, and again, that was brilliant to get, it was a good way to get your name out there, you know. Um, and then after that, yeah, placement. I did my placement in the Irish Daily Mail sports section because again, ah. Okay. Sports editor was from Sligo, so right, I knew okay. someone who knew someone who <laughs> yeah, knew him. Yeah, yeah. So then he brought me in for. I initially asked him, could I go in for a couple of weeks at Christmas because we had a really long Christmas break because we had no exams. So he was like, come in for two weeks, and then he was like, if you want to do your placement here, do it here. So that was brilliant as well Great. because he had me doing everything, everything, like yeah, stuff I hadn't a notion about, like cricket and all of this. Oh no! So it was brilliant. <laughs> it was brilliant, like because I just had to just like plunge myself into it and say yeah. right this is it I'll do it and that's it and with a lot of those you know those early jobs reporting was like look at just go and write it yourself or were they do you know what I mean were they like what's that were they, were they critical were they helpful or were you I like say, doing it really well I would say so? helpful very very helpful because I mean you know constructing it in terms of the style of, of yeah, the newspaper yeah. or whatever was something I didn't really know and we'd been taught a certain way in college mm, mm. and obviously not everybody has the same style so then at least when I was there I had someone who was able to stand over me and say okay, listen, this bit is good. We're just going to change this around a little bit, make it punchier and all that kind okay. of thing. So I did. I learned an awful lot from there. It was definitely very, very useful. Yeah, what is this? I imagine it's the catchy headline. What's the first paragraph? Oh, I will read this. Yeah. So I suppose yeah. that's an important part yeah. getting all that right. Definitely. And which do you prefer? Do you prefer in the paper or do you prefer out and about live radio, TV? See, this is a really hard question because when I was in college, I kept changing my mind as well. Mm. One week I was like, no, I love seeing your name in the paper. Like, you know, nothing yeah, beats yeah, it. Yeah. And then other times radio was great as well. Both of them have advantages and disadvantages in that, you know, a newspaper, it can take so long to put something together. Um, but when it's done, it's, it's kind of done. Um, and radio, it's the immediacy of it. Which yeah, and just the live There's also the downside to that too, because yes, you yes. can't correct something that you've said know, or got wrong. I know, I you know. <laughs> um, no, I actually, I love both of them really. Like, okay. obviously paper is, is probably the one I prefer the most, but radio is definitely <coughs> really, really close behind, yeah. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Well, you're very lucky, as you said, locally you have all these outlets that are you're getting work with. So yeah, and I've been lucky. To to I'm, really, I'm very, oh, sorry, very... Sorry, I say lucky. I mean, obviously, well able to do it. And it's great. But I'm just saying, in, in town, there's such good media outlets. Yeah, yeah. But so. I suppose, you know, you kind of need someone who's kind of going to take a chance on you. And that's the thing with, like, the radio stuff here with Austin O'Callaghan as well. He just rang me randomly one day and was like, would you be interested in doing commentary? I had never done it before. Oh, you'd never done any I'd commentary. never done any match commentary before. So I did it with, like, no training or no experience or anything, really. Oops. And I'm, I'm the kind of person who I always say, like, I, I just believe that you should always challenge yourself. Absolutely. Anyway, get out of your comfort zone. Like, I was so nervous. I'm still nervous now when I do radio, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can imagine. I'm it. very, very new to it. So even when I do it now, I'm nervous. But, like, it's a good way to be, I think. I think you should sort of... Push yourself into it. Get exactly. the adrenaline rush. And exactly, I think yeah. you're always living when that adrenaline is... is yeah, exactly. And I think it's good to kind of push yourself mm. out of that comfort zone every sure. so often. And so, uh, like, what's a normal week for you? So, I mean, I was asking before you come on, like, I presume today, because the paper is out on a Tuesday, uh, that must be a calm day. But, like, apart from the paper, like, you know, from a Monday to a Sunday, on average, what's kind of your week involved, like, with all yeah, the Yeah, so going? Monday um, is obviously crazy with, with the paper comes out and that, and that's, that can often be a late day. Um, Tuesday is a lot quieter, obviously. Um, and then Wednesday kind of picks up again. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday gets very busy. It depends then on Sligo Rovers, if they're away, I could be going to Tala or mm. Limerick or anywhere in Dublin or Waterford or Cork or Derry or somewhere on a Friday night. Um, and if that's not the case, then often there's a game in the showgrounds on Saturday. I often try to, if I have time, to kind of get that done over the weekend when it's fresh in my brain. Um, Sunday, there, there's often bits and pieces of work to be done on Sunday. I try always to get to a junior soccer game on a Sunday. All right, so um, go and watch one every weekend. Yeah. Wow. Um, and sometimes that can be work as well because it depends on if there's an important game on or not, junior yeah, yeah. soccer, and then I'll end up doing that. And sometimes if there's Connacht Cup or something, um, other newspapers in Mayo or radio stations might give us a ring and say, listen, is anybody going to that game? So Just give us back some info, like. Yeah, basically, well, yeah. So, so it's non-stop. And then, as you said, you throw in a live commentary as well as just paper reporting <laughs> you could have a live commentary to do and imagine the, the I will get to this a bit later on about the Premier League one like, but that must take ages to go oh I have to commentate now on Saturday night as well as my normal job like that must take hours like yeah it takes it takes a little bit of preparation because when you're trying to kind of do both so the great thing as I said about radio is that it's immediate mm. so you don't need to sit down and take notes and then put it all together afterwards um, but when you're doing both it means you do <laughs> right so you're okay. there doing radio and you're you know it's all grand, but, your... but once that's over you have to put it all together for a report then um, and not to mention all the as we spoke before we came on air about like the preparation that goes into it beforehand it's there's a fair Hours. bit but, but once you kind of get it get into the routine of it it's not so bad yeah. um, 
but yeah, there, there is a fair bit of work that goes into before a radio commentary. So it's not just what you hear on the radio. It's the, the stats it's building. It's the and stats, all that the stuff, hours, yeah. the hours the night before trying to put bits and pieces yeah, together. And as you said, uh, commentating about, you know, the sec you might know Sligo Rovers inside out, but you might not know the opposition. And like, I mean, you're probably not obliged to know every stat about them, but you probably, I imagine, go, oh, no, I want it to be good. So you probably delve in even deeper then. Yeah, and the thing is, there's going to be a gap. There's going to be a time where yeah. something happens and you can't keep talking about the one player, the one team. And like, mm. I know, like, I, I obviously did the commentary on the Sligo Rovers Hafner Fjordur game in the Europa League. That's an Icelandic like, team if you do. If you thought she was just, a, what is that she just said? <laughs> well, that was, that was a challenge yeah. because um, the Icelandic league wouldn't be as well supported, say, as the League of Ireland. So finding information about their players okay. was tough going. I ended up on most of their Instagram pages, like trying to see if any of them... Or I just stalk uh, them. And I LinkedIn, have to do that a bit here, yeah. I was on their LinKedIn pages too, because <laughs> most of them like actually had like proper full-time jobs too, along well, with playing course, football. Yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. like, okay, well, at least if I'm stuck, I can just say what they do is for their daytime job, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that was... A, like when you sit down to commentate, do you have pages of stats or you just go, I'll have one page in each team and that'll cover me for silence? I, I generally have pages. So I try to have like something, a few stats on every single player mm. in each squad. And then there's stats on the teams kind of, and maybe just more general kind of yeah, yeah. interesting filler stuff just in case there's a big gap or something like that. And you yeah. kind of need... You need something just to, to and how, fill. how did you get on with the names in that? It was the Icelandic, is it? Was it the whole, the Icelandic, the, their names yeah. must have been fun. Yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of practice and there was a lot of YouTube and uh, Google and mm. I found a website that gave you really good direction on how to pronounce um, Icelandic names, names and words and letters and one letter will be pronounced differently if it's before this letter oh or God, after that nice. letter and all that. So I just literally sat down with a piece of paper and wrote them all out phonetically. phonetically yeah, right. and just tried my best to learn them. <laughs> well, yeah, imagine that's the hours and hours people don't see, which is why I was fascinated when I said, you know, I'd love to have you on. It's like learning those little nuggets. Because like, it takes hours, it does rather take than just hours. a hour and a half of commentating. Like. Yeah, no, it does. And, like in local media, and I mean, we're very lucky with lots of great local media, but I'm sure you're the same. Like I know you do news, you do entertainment, you do sports. Like, again, do you, do you just kind of jump in and go, I'll just report in that gig? Or again, will you go, oh, I better learn a bit more about them. So have you a facet you love most? Like, do you love sport the most, I'm guessing? Or do you like juicy bit of news? Or is the entertainment kind of your thing as well? Yeah, or what's uh, your kind of favourite? Like, people ask me this all the time, and obviously sport is my thing, but I love doing not sport yeah, at give the same a break, time. I yeah, no, I do, I really do. And the great thing about our job is that every single day is so different and every single week is yeah. so different. And like... You might spend two days in one week covering one council meeting that all needs to be typed up and all that. And even that in itself, I know people have this have this theory that council meetings and that are boring, but they're not always. Well, I'd say they're not um, always. Is yeah, it? and there can be some very juice. exciting exchanges when heated exchanges, yeah, yeah, shall yeah. we say? Um, but yeah, like, and I always say that's that's the one thing that's that's great about our job is that you're doing something different every single week. And even if it's entertainment, you don't know who you're going to be interviewing. You could be interviewing yeah, anybody, yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah. if, if there's famous. a gig in the Hawkswell or, or Andersons, or if there's something on in the Model or whatever, like mm. there's always like um, something on. yeah, and there's always interesting people you get to interview too as well through yeah. that. So it's pretty. And would you ever get just come back to the council? Would you ever get anyone after going? Oh, don't mention what happened there. <laughs> would you ever get hinted? Oh, don't say what I said there. Or you, the can't so, say so it. Yeah, it, it happens sometimes, but then <laughs> yeah, yeah. usually it's oh why did you put that in or you know and you're yeah, like oh yeah, god yeah, yeah. but no, it's no, I mean, you're on the cold face so you go look at it, i have to stick my neck out probably sometimes yeah. and just bear yeah. with it oh yeah no and then listen you get things wrong in council meetings all the time yes okay all, correction squares we that we see is it? yeah we all do like it can yeah. be they can be really small things but those what seems like a small thing to to some people is obviously isn't to others you know mm, yeah i'm sure all part of the job all fun uh, so i mean we've already established obviously you are a sports fanatic mm. but like on your days off do you watch more sport? Do you go to matches? You know, you'd be reading up. Do you always have to stay in that bubble? Like, yeah, and I think, and this is all part of it, like in, in the sense that I love sport and I'm lucky that, that my job is kind sports, of going yeah. to sport, you know? Sunday I was at two junior soccer matches. I was at Ahana against Carberry and then I was at Kalani United against <laughs> St. John's, like just for, for the love of it more but so than anything you else. You said like you go to matches anyways. Yeah. It's not just like, oh, I better go and report this. But then when you're there, you'll always report or it's Sometimes it, it okay. depends. Yeah, no, it depends um, on what the story is. But yeah, I'm generally always watching it on television yeah. Anyway, in my spare time, if there's a match on, if there's tennis on, if there's anything on, I, I'd yeah, always yeah. try and watch it anyway. Like, you know, yeah. I just love it. Like, and I think it's just one of those things that when, when you like sports, you'll generally follow it if there's something on, you know. But, but, so, yeah, and I mean, you can't go in two days later and not realise, oh, he got sent off to the day or there was a big brawl in the rugby match. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's the thing informed. with social media as well is that it's impossible to avoid. It's everywhere. Anyway, so it's and everywhere. So you do know if something happens, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was in the car radio a few weeks ago and then uh, there was a live... Premier League match on News Talk, as you were saying earlier on, like, and then I realised that that was your first time ever doing it. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was West Ham against Spurs. Um, uh, I'm lucky I'm a West Ham fan. So I got ah, God, you're winning all I, I got a call out of the blue asked, and asked would I um, cover that game for News Talk. So that was great. It was a great experience. I'd never mm. done it for them before. Apparently, I was the first uh, female lead commentator yeah, for News so. Talk. Well done. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was a surprise. It was a great experience. Um, hopefully, there'll be more down the line. Um, but, yeah, it was... It was just a totally different experience for me. Yeah, and anyway. I mean, imagine you, again, for that, I mean, you know, commentating, Sag Rovers commentating there, like, do you connect with your co-commentator beforehand? Do you chat to them, say, you know, these are my pieces I'll talk about, will you want to talk about them? Or it's just, how are you, what's going on? Pretty can be. much, yeah. Really? I had uh, <laughs> Kate, Kate Tracy with me, former Republic of Ireland International, and we mm. hadn't met before, except when I had to go down to the door to let him in. And then because of COVID, we were separate, kept separate in separate yeah. rooms so um, that was a little bit trickier when, when you're when you're doing the commentary but um, there's kind of a not intuition I'm not going to say intuition but the cool commentator kind of knows when you stop talking that I'm in here yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. even if you stop to take a break because a lot of the time you're just talking if there's a break in play or you know you're talking for the sake of talking yeah, kind of yeah, thing yeah. so they'll know and then they can come in and yeah. It, it, like there's not that many interruptions you would think there is but usually you kind of understand when they might want when to come in a break. Yeah, you hear yeah. them taking the deep breath before they go to speak into the yeah, microphone yeah. so you say oh he wants just to get come the natural. I mean you're at it this time now you probably just get a flow of it anyways like, and, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. that's what no, I was no. saying like, don't talk over me again in the second half none <laughs> of that it's just like, none no, of that just, absolutely just none of that go with the flow but yeah not to be in the same room and I mean I was listening and it sounded brilliant like, and yeah that was a weird that, really 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 strange experience yeah because you see like it's like Rovers games now and all that we're kind of allowed there's a while there where there needs to be three seats between you and your co-commentator, yes, yeah, yeah. which is really hard to hear your co-commentator if you didn't have headphones on, you okay, know? Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's all kind of <laughs> coming away now a little bit because, you know, COVID restrictions are easing and all that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, no, th that was strange not being in the same room, but we got through it anyway. So. Yeah, I mean, there must be loads of fascinating adrenaline rushes. Like even um, after a match where you're not commentating, where you're just giving a like, you did this with Air Sport, I think, was it before? Yeah. So, like, from the match finishes, they come fairly quickly. Like, oh, how long do you have to prepare I, that? The air sport thing was, like, two minutes. Two not minutes even. to go. Yeah. And when you're talking, and again, I watch loads of, you know, the, you know, the Sky Sports ones where the guys are reporting. Uh, it, like, there's no script. Oh, no, they there's not. They just say what they remember basically, off the bat of their head. Off basically, the head yeah, side. I would scribble things down and then try to remember, like, key moments that I can say, whatever. Like, and there's a couple of times where you'd be trying to stick a pun in or something, and there's just not <laughs> the time. And you're panicking because time is running out, and you're like, oh, God. And you're so, like, you're so nervous. But again, when it's over, then you're like, oh, God, thank Just God, that's rush. over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But no, yeah. I mean, it is. It's an amazing skill and a unique skill to be able to do that. Because not everyone definitely could do that. No, but that takes up. a lot of practice. Uh, no, I imagine so. I presume you were doing them at home to the, uh, the bedroom window or the mirror, mirror. Like, was it? Just, you know, reacting. Yeah, oh, literally, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, and uh, f have you had any funny or embarrassing moments over the years, whether you were commentating or something you've seen in a match or what was that that sticks out? God, funny moments. I'm trying to think, like, bar obviously plenty of embarrassing moments when you're being shouted at by football managers or something because of something you've said or done. Oh, right, um, okay. But uh, the most recent one I can think of is when I was on commentary with a former Sligo Rovers player, Alan Keane, mm -hmm. and he was on, he's a fireman. Yes, And so oh he was no. on call. <laughs> and before the game, he made a joke, like, you know, I might have to, might have to go out, you know, if, if my alarm goes off and you're like, okay, whatever. And then I'm standing at the gate and I see him running out the gate oh. and I can hear the alarm going. I'm like, oh no, it's actually happening. So you had to go literally Just fight, fight a fire and I was on my own. For the whole match. Or the he didn't whole come match. In there. Yeah, yeah, thankfully didn't... there was nobody um, hurt yeah, or anything in the fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. Um, but yeah, but it, Keno milked it then for a few weeks after that. He was all over the newspapers talking because. about being a fireman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. So a win-win for him too. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you had a lot of talking to that night, I imagine. Oh, God, yeah. And I think it was a terrible game, if I remember correctly. And I was like, okay. oh, this is awful. Even harder own, to come up with stuff like. Got through it. Got yeah. through it. It's okay. And is there, like, I know you love those sports, we said, but is there any sports you, you, know, you don't like so much? Are you I've never into? got into, like, American football. Oh, okay. I have tried. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's on too late at night for me, Brendan. I yeah, I would often tune into Super Bowl because of the spectacle. And you know what? Sometimes I enjoy it, but the game. But I know what you mean. It goes on so long. So yeah, and another sport I can't get into. And again, I have tried is cricket. Yes, Ireland were in the World Cup a number of years ago. Yeah, again, I think everyone, they made it a bit more fun. Everyone got behind the yeah, cricket yeah. team that time. Um, but it's a sport I just I, I don't even fully, I don't fully understand. Maybe maybe if I did, I'd get it better. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That again. and American football are two sports. I, I they can't. won't be featured in the Sligo Champion anytime soon. So. Well, they might be. There's a local cricket team. Yeah, there is a local cricket team. Yeah, yeah, cricket team, yeah, yeah so you never know. They have been featured a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, and uh, obviously, with your job, has you've been at loads of amazing moments. Is there what was your favourite sporting moment that you would 
got to witness live, maybe as a fan, maybe it would work. Yeah, well, I think there'd be no surprise if I told you that it was the 2013 FAI Cup final when Anthony yes. Eldin scored that 94th minute winner. It was oh like, of all the moments I've ever seen, that's yeah, the one yeah. I watch and it still gives me goosebumps. And it was the one time I was in the press box and I'm, I keep my cool always in the press box. I never cheer anything, but I, I lost it that day. Like, yeah, rightfully so. Oh, it was an amazing day. I'll never forget it. Like, we thought it was heading for extra time, and then he goes and he gets that 94. And it was the celebration, the jersey ripped off. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's oh. nothing like that raw emotion, is there? <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's, it was incredible. Best. It was incredible, yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely, it's my favourite moment ever, yeah. So, f- to go on from here, before we let you go, what's any plans or dreams? You're kind of happy, right? Would you kind of, someone said, we want you you know, doing the news on RTE or Sky Sports, would you love that? Or are you kind of like, you know, happier you are? What's yeah, the dream? Or? I, yeah, it is, and this is a question I get asked loads as well. And, and I always say, I really, I really, it's not something I ever think about, yeah, you know? Yeah, just and I think, follow its own path. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. And I think even now, like, the media, media is changing so much. And even mm. for us in, in The Champion, a lot of what we're doing now is kind of focusing more on the digital aspect of things. Yeah, yeah. And like, I expect that that would probably grow and grow as time goes on. Um, and it'll probably move towards a more multimedia kind of thing anyway, eventually, because that's just the way yeah, newspapers are going now. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have any plans as such for the future. Okay. And I, I'm one of these people who I just kind of sit tight and see what happens. <laughs> well, it seems to be working out really well for you. The way that all these stories you're told is fascinating and, and well done what you've done. It's, it's, it's a lovely to hear all the story. And uh, as I said, just from a, a nerdy sports fan point of view, what's it like behind the mic there? So lovely having you live in the studio. We'll have you back next week, be telling you, uh, giving us your news or sport reports and uh, the best to look for everything in the future. Thanks a million, Brendan. Thanks for having me on. It's no, been a pleasure. Right. You're very welcome. So thanks again to Jessica there. And we now have our local news, sport and entertainment. We'll see you after those. Hi, I'm Daniel Battle, and here are some stories to bring you from Sligo this week. A Sligo megalithic site has been selected to go on the tentative list for World Heritage Site status. The site centres around the Caramore area, which is the largest cemetery of megalithic tombs in Ireland in the heart of the Clara Peninsula. The Sligo winner of the top prize of the Lotto Plus One draw that was on last Saturday night has yet to come forward to claim their winnings. The one million euro winning Lotto ticket was sold in Fallon's Mace service station in Colooney on the day of the draw. Sligo is to receive 268,000 euro to support community groups impacted by COVID-19 out of a total national fund of nine million. The money is available for small community groups that have been negatively impacted by the pandemic. Facilities such as women's sheds, parish halls and youth centres are eligible to apply. And Sligo Independent Councillor Michael Clark is calling for a civic reception to take place to acknowledge the acts of Sligo women who received a bravery award recently for rescuing three teenagers from the sea. Zoe Lally received a silver medal at the National Bravery Awards that were held in the Farmley House last weekend for her actions in the saving of three teenagers from drowning off Eastley Pier. That's all from me. Thank you. Good night. This week on the Sligo Show, your sports segment is brought to you by me, Alana Canal. Sligo Rovers lost 2-0 away to Derry on Friday, having secured a European spot the week prior and also announced Romeo Parks will be departing the club, while Colm Horgan, Robbie McCourt, Greg Bulger and Johnny Kenny have all signed up for contract ascensions since the last Sligo Show series. Kenny also donned the Ireland Under-19 shirt recently, scoring and assisting during their 3-2 triumph over Montenegro last week, while he slotted away the boys in green's lone strike in their class versus Bosnia and Herzegovina too during their 1-1 draw. Sligo Rugby also had entrance on a high pedestal showcase. Hubert Galvary and Dunica Byrne in action with the Connacht Eagles where they lost out 36-21. While the women's side of the 8th County Club had a feature on Ocean FM which is well worth a listen under the title Aiming High, the Rise of Women's Rugby in Sligo. Finally, all Stars snatched a win away against Strahida Wolves on Saturday in the InsureMyVan.ie Division 1 game, 98-81 the final score, with their next fixture this Saturday at home to Dublin Lions. That's it for this week's sports wrap up with me, Alana Canan. You can find more from me over on hersport.ie, the final whistle, and also your local media outlets. Hi, 
everyone, Karen Gordon here from Pop-Up Theatre Sligo with your entertainment update. Live music residencies have returned with Sunday Roast in Lily's every Sunday from 10 p.m. and the White Gorillas return to Fiddlers every Wednesday from 10 p.m. And Wired for Sound make their Anderson's debut this Saturday the 20th of November. Doors open at 10 p.m. and early arrival is advised. And in the Hawkswell this week, the Drifters tribute band played this Sunday the 21st at 8 p.m. Tickets are €25 Euro and twelve fifty concession. And Keith Walsh brings his live theatre show, Pure Mental, to the Hawkswell Theatre on the 23rd of November. Tickets are €15 Euro and early booking is advised for both shows. And finally, the Model and Island are proud to present The Afterlife of Rosie Leavers, a film by Hong Kong artist Angela Su. Showing in the Model Island until the 23rd of December, viewer discretion is advised but be sure to check it out. Take care, have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Sport and entertainment, and the very best to look to Karen, who has just started her rehearsals for her show, The Producers. Karen was a guest on our show a little while back as well, so watch out for that coming up in uh, April, I think. So check out Pop-Up Theatre in Sligo for that. Best to look, Karen. So now we have a, another special guest. We have Clodagh Flynn with us here from Maeve's Dragon Warriors. Yes. How are you? You're very welcome to the show. Thank you very much. You brought us a lovely piece of uh, timber work here. We'll get to that in a while. Yes, yes. So again, uh, it was a, a friend of mine that told me about your amazing project. So what is Maeve's Dragon Warriors? Okay, Maeve's Dragon Warriors is um, Sligo's first Dragon Boat Club for okay. cancer survivors and supporters. Okay. Um, so it's family and friends as well, is that Family, kinda... friends, yeah. And um, if you don't have a, a link to cancer by virtue of being a member of the club, you're... That, where, you are where are your link? Helping. Yes, okay, yes. I get you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I was diagnosed myself with breast cancer in November 2017. Mm -hmm. And I had a, a pretty long and crap journey with it, to okay. be honest. And um, it was only in October of last year when I started to feel well again. Oh, really? Okay. And um, people who have been through this will totally understand when you're talking about the fog that you have in your brain. Um, they call it a chemo fog or uh, chronic fatigue and um, all this. And it was almost like um, a switch had flicked kind of October last year and I suddenly started to feel well again. Right. And I thought I was always into water sports and I was open water swimmer before this and I would have enjoyed kayaking and that sort of stuff. And even through my um, three years of treatment, you know, you have gaps where you have, you're supposed to be healing and resting and I was back in the sea again. See, and yeah. <laughs> but it probably had its own things. healing qualities, whether it was mentally or... Well, or this is it too, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, headspace is really important. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I started feeling well again. That, it, it was almost as if um, a switch had flicked and that fog kind of lifted. Okay. And I thought, okay, um, I think I might like to go back to work again and um, I might like to maybe get back and do some kayaking or something like that. Because um, I had a lot of surgeries and in particular with breast cancer, a lot of chest surgeries mm. and a lot of scar tissue and it's very tight and can be just sore just, and that yeah, sort of thing. And using all those muscles, I imagine. Yeah, so I thought that would be really good. And okay. um, another side effect of the surgeries is if you have an auxiliary clearance, you have all the lymph nodes taken out of your arm and your... Um, and that area, you can develop lymphedema. Okay. So because your lymphatic system is compromised, you don't have any drainage system in that limb anymore. It's usually in an arm or chest or some people, depending on you know, where, where your cancer, cancer is, is and presume, where they've yeah. been removed, legs and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So um, I thought you know, that movement would be really good for preventing that oh, okay, happening. Okay. So um, I had heard about... Um, uh, dragon boating then and okay. I was thinking Sorry I called it Viking boating of course yes, uh, yes. Just that's the picture when I see it and we'll have some pictures in a moment and like go yeah. with dragon boating so I know yeah. So I'd heard about dragon boating and um, the connection with um, cancer survivors and breast cancer oh. and there's actually a, a Canadian doctor Dr uh, uh, Don McKenzie I think now I hope I have that right and uh, several years ago he decided to do some studies about exercise and uh, cancer patients and living beyond cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, he found that it was 
to promote exercise is a good thing. You know, you don't, because often you think of, okay, I need to go and exercise. Well, in order to do that, I need to have a certain fitness level or mobility yeah, yeah. already, you know, and you actually, you don't, you know, and I think COVID even ta taught us that with people exercising in their chairs at home, yeah, you know, yeah. just that you're moving, moving you don't have to go yeah. climb a mountain, no, you know. No, true. Um, so, Thanks to him and his research, I think there's about 240 breast cancer Dragon Ball clubs in the world now. Oh. And like there's hundreds and thousands of Dragon Ball clubs. Oh. But um, yeah, so that's, that's what I looked at. I said, right, well, you know, I'll have a look and see what's available in Ireland. So I looked up, there's an Irish Dragon Ball Association, which was formed about 10 years ago by a lady called Julie Doyle. And she's down based in Carlow. And um, I looked up their web page and uh, found that there is a dragon boat club called the Donegal Dragons, uh, founded by a wonderful lady, Deborah Bonner. So they're in Donegal. And then there was another club called the Grony Whale Dragons, founded by Louise Colleen in Castlebar. Okay, so I got in touch with both clubs and I said, I'm piggy in the middle here yeah, and yeah. I'd love to, you know, find out more about it. But then we were in the thrills of COVID. So, you know, they weren't allowed out on the water. Yeah. So they said, well, when we get out on the water, give us a shout again and we'll do. So I did. You and and um, I did. And I thought to myself, you know, we are surrounded by water in Sligo between the sea, the lakes, the river. Why don't... Utilise that. I, yeah. yeah. So I came up with the idea, well, maybe you know, I'll just start up my own Fair Dragon Ball Club yeah, in yeah, Sligo. Yeah. Well, it sounds logical. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Save on yeah, diesel. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. So it was just money, really. It was the only reason that's you That's absolutely the idea. Yeah, yeah. So um, I approached the Sligo Cancer Support Centre and um, I said I had this idea and they said do up a flyer, we'll, we'll send it out on our Facebook page and they did and I got a few hits and the next thing I was sitting in front of the laptop at home on a Zoom meeting with these faces looking at me thinking what are we going to do and yeah. I said I don't know. <laughs> but it's an exciting start to the journey anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's we started on Zoom uh, last yeah. November. During Covid obviously so you, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and the boat itself then, like where did this, where did you find, itself. where do you find a dragon <laughs> boat? Like? Well, this is it, yeah. So after that first um, Zoom meeting, I said, you know, we have to form a committee. Um, so there was myself and Myrne Tobin uh, said she'd be our secretary and Maura Conway is our treasurer. And uh, I got a lot of support now from Julie Doyle, the Irish Dragon Boat Association, Jan and Carlo, you know, telling me what to do. You know, she said, get the new, get the word out there, get people interested, get yourself a committee, and then you start fundraising. So um, I was collecting my son from school um, before Christmas, and I got a phone call from a lady, Irene Doyle, and uh, she said that her husband had seen the Facebook post from the Sligo County, and she, this the lady was in, Center, yeah, yeah, but this lady's in Kilkenny. So, and, and I had even got, you know, responses from Australia and America saying, oh, great to see another Dragon Ball Club starting yeah, up. And yeah. how the hell did they know? Oh, <laughs> but yeah. it, like, it's worldwide. It's amazing. Anyways, Irene rang me and she said, I see you're starting up club. And uh, do you have a boat? And I said, no. I said, we just about have a committee on and getting <laughs> my head wrapped around fundraising and all that sort of stuff. And she says, well, we have a boat for you. And I said, that's brilliant. Second hand boat. Excellent. Because they're in the region of 10 to 12,000 sort imagine, of. Yeah, yeah it's you, a beautiful piece and, of, of yeah, like, yeah, and there, um, there's, a, there's a place in Germany that make them or of course China. So um, You wouldn't get it from China too quick either at the moment, I no, imagine. No, <laughs> no, no. So I said, that's great. You know, how much do you want for it? And she said, no, it's a gift. Wow. So I was just absolutely speechless. I couldn't, I couldn't understand, like, what do you mean it's a gift? You know, surely to God, it's, you know, we need to raise money yeah, for yeah, this. And yeah. she said, no, no. She said, um, when they were starting up, um, I think about maybe six years ago, the Plurabell Paddlers in Dublin were the first breast cancer dragon boat club in Ireland. And they uh, were funded two boats and they called them the Anna Livia. Okay. And when they became more established and they were able to buy more boats for themselves, they decided to gift those boats onto oh. new cancer startup clubs. Wow. So they gifted the Nor Dragons 
yes, in Kilkenny. Okay. And as they grew and became established, then they were looking for a new startup, and we were lucky, mm, enough, we were lucky enough to yeah. be that new startup. Wow. So um, I went up to um, Kilkenny in April, and uh, I was very fortunate as well because they, I was thinking, right, how are we going to get this down? I was going to say, it's not the shortest boat around. No, like. the boat is 40 foot long. Yes, that's you know, not easy. And it's quite funny, actually, when I say that to people. Now, you know, do you see that container over there? That's a 40 foot container on the back yeah, of that yeah, lorry. Yeah. I said, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. <laughs> but you, you, got it, you got it here. So yeah, the, they gave us the lend of their road trailer. Wow, and, a um, very generous bunch all together, aren't they? Yeah, and um, I signed on the dotted line that when we were established and okay. uh, okay. the boat was uh, not so instrumental for us, you know, that we had other boats that we would gift it on again. Nice. So this boat is going, going to be moved on again in a few years' stories. time. Yeah, wow. yeah. but I, I, I towed the boat down from um, Kilkenny with my daughter <laughs> in the car. <laughs> All oh, right, um, so I thought you were going to say we, we got a truck. No, so no, you got no, their me, trailer and then yeah, yourself. Yeah, sure, my, daughter was down, no woman. my daughter was down doing exams in uh, Pilltown. She's in Kildalton down in Pilltown. And I said to her, when I, when I picked her up, I said, we're just doing a bit of a diversion. <laughs> oh, so she through like. Kenny. <laughs> and uh, we pulled in and um, Irene said, yeah, come on, yeah, reverse back there now and hitch up. And I said, OK. And then I got back into the car and I just said to my daughter, Ashton, I said, just well, I'm wearing a face mask because underneath the face mask was, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, because my brain hadn't registered. You hadn't towed too many 40 foots, like. <laughs> no. I, I don't think many people that have bar truck drivers like. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, I had seen the trailer as far as the wheels, but then yeah. there's an awful lot more behind, behind the wheels. And turning. Yeah. I mean, you should have just rode it up around the coast, maybe. Oh, though. stop. Got David yeah. McGowan out in Ennis yeah. to help you with that we had, one. We had to pull in at, uh, in a, at the Apple Green. We had to park with <laughs> the lorries because <laughs> we wouldn't fit in the other spaces. It was very funny. Oh, but again, a lovely memory and a lovely story. Like to, yeah. to, to the story of the boat is fascinating. So it's getting shared around. It's, it's yes, yeah, yeah. That so that's project. where get that's going, yeah. So uh, like, I know Brian, as we're talking, Brian has some photos there to show people what it oh, looks yeah. like and I mean there's some lovely videos on your social media as well yes. to show people what it's like it, it looks amazing and like how often do you meet on the water or, or where do you go yeah from? well we like the boat came down to Sligo in April it was on the trailer in my garden and um, then I was fortunate enough to be uh, to go up to meet the Donegal Dragons and to get out in their boat Mm -hmm. And I thought when I came back from there, I said, I need to get this boat off the trailer. Like at that time, we didn't have a suitable home that we could operate out of and, yeah. you know, an access to the water. So I, I went and I got uh, lorry tires and put them on the lawn and I got a few friends and neighbours out to, I said, Lifting would you ever give me a hand lifting the boat? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I'd be grand. And they come around the corner, <laughs> what? Go, what? <laughs> so we lifted it out onto tires and, um, that's one of the first photographs then up on our Facebook page is I invited out 10 of the members to come out with their masks on and get Just into the boat. And get a feel for it. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And um, we did an awful lot of fundraising, an awful lot of local businesses that sponsored us and we were able to buy life jackets and paddles. Of course, these, yeah, the expensive things too, like, yeah, yeah. things like that. So we've had huge local support, you know, which is know really, that. really important. And, um, yeah, so that first day that we were sitting in the boat in the garden, my 15-year-old uh, son, he's just turned 16 now, is upstairs in the room with the music going and he's looking out the window and he says, Re, the steady with the life jackets and paddles in the garden. <laughs> in the garden. The you can't be too safe these days. <laughs> that's something we've learned in yeah, Ireland. You can't be too safe. So. Yeah. Oh, well, that's amazing. And yeah. uh, so you meet, what days of the week do you meet? Is it always on or is it just every so So we're often? meeting, at the moment we're meeting on, um, on a weekend, generally speaking Sunday. Mm. So... Uh, right up until, like, I I couldn't find somewhere suitable because what we need for um, to operate is we need the shore side to be right because we need parking. Yes. You know, the boat can take a full crew of 22. So you've right. potentially 22 cars, you know. Yeah, true enough. Yeah, yeah. So you need parking. You need uh, either a slipway or um, a pontoon that you can access the boat either get the boat into the water and it stays in the water or a slip that you can run it down oh yeah and um you need safe water because we are all beginners um there's maybe six or eight of us have had the opportunity to paddle with Donegal 
during the summer and learn the skills and the techniques with the idea that we come back then and teach everybody else. Okay, so any time we're out on the water, there's maybe four, possibly six, I want like experienced paddlers. <laughs> Crazy <but> enough. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then the others may have been on the water two or three times, okay. you know. So everyone's so, just gaining a little bit of experience each time. And you often yeah. have a boat, which is a safety boat sometimes, do you? Do yes, yeah. Sam, Sam Purcell. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. lovely Sam. Sam. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Sam has been escorting us, yeah. So we finally got the right place, um, Waterglades, uh, Noel Merrick, uh, owns Waterglades out near the Holy Well. Oh, yeah. There's okay. a garden centre and um, a marina behind that that you would oh. never know is there. Oh, I've never heard of it, yeah. Yeah. So uh, Noel came on board and gave us a spot there. And um, that's that's where we launched on the 10th of October. Um, we had we did a fundraiser for the Can Sligo Cancer Support Centre and for Breast Cancer Ireland. And uh, we went out in the boat from there out onto Ahamore Bay then as the part of the lake then yeah. that we'd be paddling. So you on. have uh, X amount of people rowing and then you have someone steering, I think, paddling. as well. Yes. Paddling, yeah. yes, <laughs> of course. So that's what I'm saying. So when I say <laughs> rowing sounds too intense, it's a, it's a very gentle uh, well, bit of exercise, you know, is it? Or does it moment, suit everyone? No, at the moment it's gentle, yeah. Okay. Um, but I know that when we get a lot more experience and we home in on the technique and all that, I think um, the competitive streak is going to come out. And right. I would love to see that we would be able to host maybe a Northwest Regatta or something like that oh, and okay. have Lovely. Donegal and Mayo or, you know, any other clubs yeah, to yeah, come yeah. down and participate. Well, it as would you said, be Sligo, it's never a place to have a, a space and a, a yeah. facilities for it. Like yeah, Sligo, it should be brilliant. And like, like, as I said, if someone's maybe not thinking they might be up for they can just not really row hard at all no. and just let the others do the work. All <laughs> shapes, sizes, ages, genders. So everyone's welcome. Everybody is in. welcome. Yeah. And as yeah. you said, it's, it isn't, it is obviously the group is for cancer survivors, but as you said, they're friends, family as well. So yeah, it can just help yeah. them along that journey too, together. Yeah. Like nice we have thing. members who have been through cancer themselves. Maybe yeah. their partner has, maybe a sibling or a parent or a child, okay. you know, and we all just support each other. And, and like that, even for your own physical strength or fitness or ability, you know, it's irrelevant really because you're part of a team, you know, yeah, yeah, and, okay. and th it's a team, team effort to get the boat in the water and to get the boat through the water. Until you laugh, so people so, get a bit oh, too wet or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. presume it's very much a social event as much as it is exercise. Massive, like it's, yeah. It sounds like that. Like, yeah, which is lovely. absolutely, yeah. Our helm actually had to bring a whistle one day because there was too much chitter chatter <laughs> on the boat. So she'd be there blowing the whistle and then it's silence. Yeah, yeah. So the helm stands at the back and she's, she's responsible for steering and given direction and for the safety really of everybody on board, you yeah, know. Of course, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, so that's... that's, that's it. And you, you've yeah. mentioned a few times now the Sligo Cancer Support Centre. Yeah. And, I mean, I imagine someone that's, when they get diagnosed, I, I imagine you would totally say, go to those guys over there. Yeah. It seems like an amazing service. I was in there once, I didn't realise all the services they did. I was dropping in something one day and then realised what they do. Yeah, like, it's, it's yeah amazing. they're phenomenal in there. and. Like I can only say for myself, you know, you're walking yeah. down the street. Oh, yeah, that's there, you know, and you just keep going. And I was diagnosed in November. I'd already had a surgery. I had started chemo. I'd lost my hair. I was still in denial. <laughs> you know, okay, yeah, I don't yeah. need to go in there. Yeah, I and imagine it's, it's a strange kind of step. Is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, because you, you know, I don't know. You don't want to really admit that you need help or, you know, even understand the enormity of what you're going Quite through sure, either, yeah, yeah. you know. So um, myself and another lady who I actually met in the uh, waiting room to meet the oncologist, Fran Faulkner, who has since passed away, oh. um, we went in there together. And so uh, yeah, it. yeah. And I was even just talking with Margaret, one of the girls who works in the centre there the other day, and she said, I remember when the two of you came in and we, I was showing you what we do and what we offer. And Fran was saying, Well, I'll do this. Okay, well, I'll do that. What are you doing? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they're absolutely brilliant. And in I, there. they have services for family members as well, yeah, don't 100%. they? Like, so again, it's yeah. maybe people so aren't aware of everything. They, ca they cater and they look after everybody. It's not just because it's not just an individual who goes through a cancer diagnosis, no, like it's their family members too. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, um, like in my case, I'm separated. I'm home alone. I had four children. Oh, wow. The youngest okay. was um, 11 or 12 when this kicked off, and my eldest was just starting his first year in college. So it's very difficult for them as well, you know. And um, 
people don't know what to do for you. And, and even for me, being a parent, you don't want them to see you upset yeah, all the yeah, time, you know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you are a lot of the time. Oh, but I you have to wait the, until they're gone. Different. To, and to the safe, it. yeah, and the safe place to do that is in the cancer support centre. Okay. You know, they offer counselling for yourself and for your family members if they want it. Okay. They do, um, they do uh, different treatments like bioenergies and uh, reflexology and that sort of thing. And and then when you're coming out the other side, like living beyond cancer mm. is really, really important as well. To kind of get you back into the system or normality yeah, again? Yeah, and, or, and yeah. to find out, you know, because you change mentally so much and physically often as well, and yeah. you're just not the person you were before. Okay. You know, some of the side effects are long lasting and will be with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. And like, they really support you in that next journey. And that's what I like to think that Maeve's Dragon Warriors is a part of that journey. Yes, You're complimenting yeah, it's their the service. living well beyond cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? no, I, I mean, the strength in numbers, I imagine, too. And, yeah, and you shared see, stories and shared experiences and maybe some help going, well, I used this and I went to this That's person. exactly it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, look, uh, it's a fascinating story. And now it's, it's fascinating to see what you've done, but then to hear how it all came about. Like, what a lovely story with the boat sharing and stuff like that. So, yeah. like, how does someone, did they, did they connect with you on social media or, you know, do you have to officially yeah. join up or no, just, just give you <laughs> yeah. a message? Yeah, so it? we're on social media. Mm. Uh, we're on Facebook, Maeve's Dragon Warriors. And that's M-E-D-B-S. -E -S. I've seen Maeve spelled so many ways. I know, yeah. So just yeah. if someone's looking for you, M-E-D-B-S. Yeah, I live under okay. Knockner and when I was trying to come up with a, a name for it, I thought, oh, Maeve, yeah, she's a warrior queen. We're going to be warriors. So, Very good. yeah, so that's where that came from. And I just thought M-E-D-B-S is nice and short, too. And, um, yeah, so we're on Facebook or the Irish Dragon Boat Association have a, a web page and there's an awful lot of information on that and they have a list of the clubs so, in Ireland as well. So even if someone's listening that's not Sligo, there's, there's plenty Yeah, go, go on to their web page okay. and you'll see, um, I think, clubs near you and they'll show a wow. list of all the clubs that are in that's Ireland. That's insane, this whole group of people yeah, doing all this similar sport. Yeah, it's a community I yeah, never, never knew existed, knew. but they are phenomenal, Thank you know, you. And, the, and the support that um, other clubs, you know, give us, like, you like Donegal were so generous to us during the summer and trying to slot us in as guest mm. paddlers throughout the summer. Yeah, yeah. And then um, there was a group of about 15 of us went down to the Grony Whale Dragons in Castlebar and they took us out as well, you know. So they're, they're just... They're just phenomenal. I imagine for all the dark times of cancer, like, uh, there's obviously lots of good sides to humans you get to see yeah. and so much love out there for and help. Yeah. So that was a brighter side to the whole journey. Yeah, like I, I met a lady, um, Fiona Slevin, it's her name, from the Plurabell Paddlers in, in Dublin. I met her at the weekend and she uh, was delighted to meet because our boat originated with them, you know, okay. Dragon Anna is the oh, name yes, of our boat. Okay. And uh, she, she was saying that... Um, when she was diagnosed with breast cancer, she bumped into a friend of hers and she says, oh, that's brilliant. You've been diagnosed with breast cancer. You can come in on the dragon boat now. <laughs> you know, so it's like, oh, okay. Club, like. Yeah. Okay, there you yeah. go. Look at it. Yeah. You, have to, you have to have a bit of fun. And I yeah. see you've loads of little goodies here. Yeah, and, and this beautiful yes, piece of... Uh, yeah, these uh, are for you. A few oh. stickers for the car wow, now. So well, you can, well, I will put them on the driving seat yes, car. Yes, thank you Absolutely. very much. Yeah. So there we go. If anyone, I don't know if Brian is getting close to us there. That's how you spell the Maeve on it. Yeah, <laughs> M -E -B -D -B -S. So it is, and who, who made so this beautiful carving? So this is um, as we, another Sligo man that you might like to talk to is uh, Michael Quirk. Oh, I think I'd need about nine hours. Yeah, to yeah, to yeah, talk to that man. yeah. He just talks and talks. So he's there on uh, Wine Street. Yes. yes. Yeah. So um, I went into him just before launch day to see what he'd be able to do up a piece for us. So he did this up wow. um, very quickly on our logo. As he does, like. He's yeah, insane just, and yeah, whipped it up. Yeah, so I just so thought it that's was a nice little and crest I just bring to it in. To have. Yeah, and, uh, and my, my eldest boy, um, Oshin, actually designed the logo first. Oh, so real, so real family connection all around He drew there, that so up, lovely. yeah. And it's really nice, yeah, it's really well done. Yeah. So, well, look at... Claude, it's lovely to hear the story of the boat. I said, I've seen it, as I heard from a friend of mine told me about it first, and I said, that is just something fun and unique to get used to get a group of people together rather than just, oh, we'll go for a coffee. Like, let's do something fun. Yeah, and a bit we have, silly we have and the coffee coffee. afterwards. Oh, yes, yeah, so I was going to say, I'm sure yes. there's plenty of social <laughs> gatherings around the group, apart from yeah. them in the water as well, I yeah, imagine there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, anyone that, as I said, it's Maeve's Dragon Warriors. That's it, yeah. Well, listen, the best of luck with the club, and if that's something we can do here you. in the show anytime, don't be afraid to let us know. Thank you very much. Bye -bye.
Well, that's about it for tonight's show. Thanks to Cloda and thanks to Jessica earlier on for coming on to the show with us. Thanks to all our contributors with our new sport and entertainment. As always, thanks to the team behind the camera there, Finian and Brian helping out. Uh, and of course, Connie and Mark here in the Riverside for always letting us have this space. We're very grateful. We'll be back again live next Tuesday where we'll be talking to Blohin Sweeney from the Having a Laugh charity. And we're going to be ch chatting to the guys in the Hawks as well. So we'll see you at eight o'clock live next Tuesday. Thank you. So if you liked what you just seen, don't forget to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel here. We've loads of great interviews from a load of really interesting people over the series. And if you're on social media, which I'm sure loads of you are, we are on Instagram and Facebook. So give us a follow there.